From fastcompany.com, fun little coronaphobia side story that I'm actually excited about. We may have to rethink the toilet seat altogether, how the coronavirus could change bathrooms for the better. And I've said this before, even as someone who has consistently been on the side of, look, we need to, we need to take an honest look at these overinflated statistics. They've always been overinflated. I, I still want to cheer the fact that we're becoming a little more germ conscious as a society. Like that's like, I'm, I'm, I've been on, you know, uh, up till coronaphobia, you know, on, on the, 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 the curve, if you, if you have a bell curve around five on a scale of zero to 10, you know, I've, I've been somewhere around seven and a half, like uh, uh, towards the germaphobe side of the scale. And all of a sudden, the general population went up to like 12 on this scale. And I'm like, whoa, whoa OK, slow down. Just wash your hands more and I'll be really happy, you know. Um, and I, I, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. But yeah, the, it's like and but where it's where it's settling is more like around where I am, except for the mask. Well, no, with the masks, obviously people are at a different scale of, of germophobia right now. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a wash my hands before and after kind of guy. So from Laura Sorokonik, uh with fastcompany.com, even before COVID-19, the United States was behind in its approach to public restroom design, gendered bathrooms with typical foot revealing stalls or even totally unencased urinals that sounds so that sounds like a good name for a band the unencased urinals unencased urinal cakes <sighs> i'll unencase your urinal cakes lack the privacy cleanliness and comfort of their gender neutral single pod counterparts in europe and asia and by the way i'm i'm already a fan of this man like i go to anytime fitness is my gym it's so sad that i can't go right now i love anytime fitness one of the things i love about it individual bathrooms one person at a time close and lock the door and it all to yourself showers you do your own hygiene take your time like i i think that is wipe surfaces down if you want like i i love that um so yeah i'm already on board here uh single pod counterparts that's another great band name we are the single pod counterparts how many more band names can we get out of this new story? <laughs> it's not really a new story. It's more like hygiene analysis. Hey, that's a great band name. We are hygiene analysis. All uh, right. You're creating new bands across the country. <laughs> but as, <laughs> as the U.S. gears up for re reopening in the midst of the, of the COVID-19 crisis, the inadequacies that were once uncomfortable are revealing themselves to be downright dangerous. Mm -mm -mm. Consider that the vast majority of commercial bathrooms in the U.S. don't even include lids on toilets, <gasps> meaning that every time someone flushes, a toilet plume of droplets explodes into the air, coating the surrounding stall and the person standing in it and aeros aerosolizing the bowl's contents. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We are. We are the aerosolized contents. <laughs> Wait, no. Toilet plume. Oh. Have you heard toilet plume? They're way better in console. <laughs> All right. America's open topped and bottomed stalls make that problem even worse, considering that most experts estimate a plume can travel six feet in every direction. That's a great name for a band. We are six feet in every direction. <laughs> or that could be a song, <laughs> uh, including up and over any stall and into the next more gross. We also know that COVID 19 has been found in human poop. <laughs> Man, I saw found in human poop in concert. <laughs> Worst concert oh, ever. God. No, it was terrible. Found in human poop. No, terrible. All right. Up to 33 days after infected people have recovered and tested negative for the virus. Negative for the virus. We are negative for the virus. No amount of hand washing will remove a virus sprayed all over your body. There's some obvious inconvenient fixes. 
We are the inconvenient fixes. Adding lids to public toilets, implementing touchless flushing. Have you yeah, have you tried features. touchless flushing? <laughs> Dude, Touchless Flushing's new album, Faucets and Soap Dispensers, off the hook. Closing off every other stall or urine if they're too tightly packed together, Aaron Lilly, a design manager for Kohler, says that the company expects to see an uptick of interest in, quote, materials that repel dirt or allow for easier cleaning, including withstanding stronger cleaners. That's an album for sure, withstanding stronger cleaners, and products that function with minimal to no human touch. James Walsh, VP of Product Management at American Standard, says that the company has seen a huge uptick in requests for touchless technologies, particularly from schools hoping to improve bathrooms before potentially reopening this fall. And while lids may seem like a quick fix, Walsh says Americans are generally not inclined to use them in shared spaces. People don't even want to touch a manual flush valve. They kick flush using their foot, he says. We may have to rethink the toilet seat altogether and potentially add sensor activation of the seat going up and down. It's like, remember when they decided they were gonna improve airport bathrooms? Yeah. Like, yeah, so we're gonna make it a touchless sensor that sprays your butthole every time you move half an inch on the toilet seat so that you don't have to touch the lever. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. More long-term experts suggest that the public restroom needs to be elevated in American priorities. Hey, remember when they said they were going to make toilet paper more efficient and they made it so thin in public restrooms that you have to fold it over a hundred times to not go through it with your fingers? Yeah, wasn't that a great improvement when they when they did that? Most long-term experts suggest that the public restrooms need to be elevated in American priorities. U.S. businesses don't seem to understand, like European U businesses, <laughs> that having clean, safe, nice bathrooms is better for their bottom line. Bottom line. Oh, yeah. So Stephen Soifer, a professor, professor of social work at the University, University of Mississippi and president and co-founder of the American Restroom Association. That's a real thing. That should be a band name instead. Dude, did you hear that the American Restroom Association is, high, is, is headlining Lollapalooza this year? <laughs> <laughs> the, or <laughs> the organization has long advocated for single person gender neutral restrooms. The pandemic has added one more argument for them since the setup means those toilet plumes at least don't carry over the stall next to yours. So if her also points to a disastrous experiment, and there's another great band name, by their city by the city of Seattle to install self-cleaning public bathrooms with spray disinfectant and power wash floors after every use, but ended up trapping and hosing down homeless people. There's an album name, Hosing Down, Hosing Down Homeless People. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. As an expensive solution that might be considered if implemented better after COVID-19. Though the execution would have to be closely evaluated, the idea might have some value considering that experts estimate COVID-19 can survive on hard, smooth surfaces. Yes. Oh, dude, hard, smooth surfaces. Oh, I love the sound. Hard, so hard and smooth. A stainless steel for up to three days. I don't know if I can get through the rest. There's three more paragraphs. I don't know if we can do it. Beyond the flush install itself, the way our public restrooms are organized doesn't bode, bode well for social distancing. Says Catherine Anthony, a professor, <laughs> a professor of architecture at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, who is also a board member of the American Restroom Association. It's like the American Honky Tonk Bar Association. The American Restroom. All right, I'll stop. For... <laughs> Venues that anticipate people being squeamish about touching door handles, we may see the adoption of S-shaped restrooms that don't have entrance doors and instead use a winding shape to keep stalls from view. I'm all for that. Anthony also advocates for gender neutral, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where women, particularly at high traffic events where women have to wait in long, closely packed lines while men's rooms remain fairly empty. Closely packed lines. It sounds like a band name or a way to serve up lines of cocaine. 
Well, there's much to be improved in America's restrooms. There are some factors to be reassured about, at least according to Andrew Dent, EVP of Material Research at Material Connection. Yeah. Which researches and advises design companies on the best materials for products. Dent points out that bathrooms, unlike stores, offices, waiting rooms, or lounges, are designed for regular harsh dis disinfection and are cleaned on a regular basis, even outside of pandemics. Though there have been su suggestions that naturally antimicrobial materials, naturally antimicrobial, nice. we are naturally antimicrobial materials such as silver or copper might make a resurgence. Post COVID-19, it would be better if, if we get to a post COVID-19, if I can get through this story, it would be better to clean bathroom surfaces more regularly. Den says, if we're concerned about bacteria and viruses, every single door is covered in them. The handle in the restroom has probably been cleaned 10 times in the past few hours. Though that may be a tad optimistic, the point stands. Den suggests that time in, and research would be better spent changing people's habits, whether that's getting them to wash their hands for longer and more often or putting the seat down when they flush. And she says, quote, I would prefer a smooth, non-porous surface, which is touched minimally by design and have it cleaned as regularly as possible. We are cleaned as regularly as possible. 